In this lesson, we will see two and three dimensional objects. Firstly, by clicking to add on this menu, we are adding a 3D plane. This plane is a 3D surface. Now let's create a material from here and say plane to it. I'm pairing it with the plane from here. After that, I'm adding a frame texture to my material. Now I need to enlarge the plane. Let's say 3 and 4 from here. Now the frame size is as I wanted. The plane could work with face tracker because it's 3 dimensional. Now I'm dropping it about the face tracker. And now I can see the frame on the model's face. After that, let's add a 2D rectangle to our scene. Rectangle is coming with the canvas avatar. Canvas means the full size of our screen. When our screen dimensions change, depends on the device we use. Canvas is rearranging the rectangle. Work. Now after choosing the canvas from here, let's make a full screen by choosing full width and full height. After that, let's create a material for it too and call it as rectangle after that I have downloaded an image for it a different one I'm also adding it by coming to rectangle then choosing my material yes now the image is as I want it to be now I want to keep this text behind the frame for that, firstly, I drag this one to there. Now the frame is remained behind the text, so it's not visible at the moment. Only visual when the model moves. Now we have a setting here on the material called Advanced Runner Option. We have two options here. The use depth one is keeping the object on back. And the right depth is letting it stays on front. If both of them are checked, it lets whichever is on front stays on front. If both of them are unchecked, it brings the unchecked object to the front. Now let's see it by trying. For example, I choose the plane now. I want the plane to be on front. I uncheck the use depth for that. And because right is checked, it brings the plane on front and the rectangle kept behind as I want. You can do those settings from here like that. Like you can arrange two objects to be on front or the back. That's what we use it for. Now I delete the rectangle and adding one more plane to my scene. From here. I'm tying it to face tracker as seen. Let's change its size to, let's say 4, like this. Now we can make this one a text too. Let's call the rectangle. One as plane 2, change its name. After that, I tied the plane 1 to plane 2. And it's now being as I want it. Now from here, we have a null object. Let's see what it is. I add the null object. After that, I'm dragging the plane 1 and plane 2 inside of the null object. Now, after dragging these two planes into the null object, I can control them as one. This is what we use null object for. For example, I change it to 0.5 shrinked at to half. They both shrink together, or for if I change its position, they both move together. We can do those things by choosing the null object. And when I drag it and drop it to face tracker, both objects are moving together with the null object. Null, null object let us control two objects as one. Now as 3D here, we have we see the face mesh detailed. 
3D object lets you import a 3D object to Spark from your computer. Now let's see text. First, let's clean my scene. Let me clean my scene first. Text is also coming with canvas because text also needs a canvas to control its dimensions on different device sizes. Now on our text, we have the size here. Pins, we will see them later. Firstly, we have a text box here. We can type anything we want there. What we want to type on. I have to resize it because the London text doesn't fit there. When I enlarge it, it's getting larger from here. I also can arrange its height. There we have an editable button. When the editable is on, the user of the filter could change the text. Besides those, there is a dynamic text tab. By those current city, current airport buttons, the filter is bringing the current city or airport to the screen by getting users' current locations. Or same like day, time, or temperature. It brings the current values by Instagram to the filter screen. <clears throat> There we have some different fonts. There we have the common text settings, like font size, font colors, like spacings. We can arrange the position, size, and rotation from here. Now let's take a look at alignment. When I click on one of them, it moves the text to a specific point like sticking it on top or bottom. We have different alignments here, like align it to center, right or left. There we have the pins. Like pinning is, let's take this one to the top first. When I click on this one, I'm saying the important thing is the distance from the top of the screen for me. So it doesn't matter if this screen is getting bigger or smaller, it will keep the same distance. If I click on the left one, it's the same thing from the left and also the other ones. When I remove those and select the center one, or I can select all of them, that means keep your distance from all sides equally. Like even the screen gets larger, it puts the text on same point. We also have flexibility button here. That means when the screen gets larger, it's arranging its height or width. We are doing those by clicking this ones here. When we leave it, it's letting the text size stay same. That's what it does. For not to remain small on your screen. Now I'll add a new texture from here. I've added it. Let's create a new material and call it text. Let's choose this one from here. I'm choosing the flood because it's two dimensions. Now when I click on the text now, I can add material to it. Just like that. Is placing the texture inside the text like this. Also, like a different type. Let's enlarge it a bit. To five. No, it's been so large. Let's say three. Let's make this one three, two. We can add material and resize it like this. Our 2D and 3D objects was like that. 